A very warm good evening to everyone, those who have joined this session. I'll be waiting for one minute for a few of the students to join in so that I can start with the session. So I'll be coming live after one minute. I'm just waiting for one minute for a few students to join in. Hello, everyone. Uh, if you can hear my voice, please write yes in the comment section so that I can move ahead with the class. Today is the 10th lecture and today is the 10th lecture for the prelims booster course. And as promised, I'll be delivering 30 lectures where we'll be discussing the most important probable topics from the exam perspective, that is APSC prelims and also UPSC prelims to be conducted on September 12th and October 10th, respectively, this year. So, <clears throat> as you know, today's class will be the continue continuation class of the last class, that is lecture nine. Uh, we'll be continuing with international organizations. So, Let's quickly go ahead with the topics that we had discussed in the last class and we'll move ahead with the next important topics. So as you know, we had already discussed about BRICS in the last class in details. I hope you have developed, we discussed about the new development bank, Fortalizer Declaration. Okay, also about the contingent reserve arrangement. So I hope you remember this and thorough revision is required. We discussed about ASEAN and everything in details and India being a member of the East Asia Summit and not of Asian Regional Forum and not of Asian Plus 3 also. Okay, So it is very important for us to know that uh, India is a member of which particular global regional group and it is, a, it is not a member of which global group. So it is very important. We also discussed about BIMSTEC in details. Then we discuss about India-Myanmar relation because of it is in news and mostly the Sagar Mala initiative, a very important one. Then talked about a bit for the Treaty of Sagoli and India-Nepal relations. Then we discuss about India-Pakistan and specifically the important part that we discussed was Indus Water Treaty, which is a very, very important one. Okay. Then the we, they, they, we didn't talk about the Gilgit Baltistan in the last class. Okay. But you should be knowing that Gilgit Baltistan is very much is in news, and that is why this particular reason you should know along with the Siachen Glacier. Okay, and you can see this red particular portion in the screen. I am drawing it. Okay, this is the Siachen Glacier. Okay, and this is having a border with the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, this portion, India, and China. And this is outside Chin area. This is also captured by China. Okay, and this red line is the LOC. So Siachen Glacier is also the highest battlefield in the world. And this area specifically is the Gilgit Baltistan area. Okay. And area is of total around 7297, almost close to the area of Assam. Population is around 2 million plus in 2013. Siam majority is there and 14% urban area. Literacy rate is roughly 72%. 
revenue earner is mainly tourism, trekking, and mountaineering. Okay. So the, it is a reason which India considers as a part of undivided JNK, but under current administration by Pakistan. And the present government is very, very optimistic and hopeful to take back this particular reason from Pakistan and make it a part of an integral part of India. OK, so Gilgit Baltistan issue came to the fore when the government of Pakistan decided to grant it provisional pro provincial status. So Pakistan has granted a provincial provisional provincial status in May 2020. Earlier, the region was a prov provisional autonomous region. OK, so what India needs to do is like. <clears throat> in if, if we draw this map of Pakistan like this, OK, somewhere like this. So there is this portion of Baluchistan area, okay, and where which is like there is some separatist movement going on. And India needs to concentrate on this particular region to take away from Pakistan if Pakistan is not going away from this particular region. And United Nations is also involved in it of the resolution that was passed in 1948, okay. And there, as per that resolution, we know that there are three conditions that first of all pakistan has to take back its troops from this particular region and then india will bring back its troops from this region and then plebiscite will be conducted so plebiscite cannot be conducted till the time pakistan removes its troops and pakistan is nowhere showing any kind of uh, signal that they are willing to take back its forces obviously it won't happen so india has to take some aggressive step in order to take back this but again recently after the development of china pakistan economic corridor through the LOs, through this pakistan occupied kashmir area the chinese angle has also entered into this and uh, pakistan is actually getting the support and the backup from this chinese profile and that makes it more challenging for india to take back this pakistan occupied kashmir area so moving ahead with the next important topics, that is India and the extended neighbors, India and Mauritius. The India-Mauritius CECPA is the first trade agreement signed by India with a country in Africa. All right. So from this fact perspective, it becomes important from your exam perspective. It is a limited agreement that will cover only select sectors. Okay. So you need to be very thorough about this particular trade barriers okay the technical trade barriers sanitary and phytosanitary measures or dispute settlement now what are these sanitary and phytosanitary measures now see in economics we study these topics in great details but now since this is a class only where we discuss the probable questions or topics so we cannot go into details but at the same time this all comes under wto there is some organization called as trips under wto now these things should be very very clear with all of you okay in your economics and uh, concepts and phytosanitary are also measures which actually creates a barrier okay for any international trade to happen all right so these are non-tariff barriers okay these are non-tariff barriers tariff barriers are like putting some additional taxes or custom duty in a particular item which is being uh, imported or exported but sanitary and phytosanitary are like based on quality assurance okay or based on child labor issues so these are non tariff uh, uh, non uh, tariff barriers so these are acting like a barrier so that you do not allow okay uh, other nations uh, goods to enter in your economy because in order to protect the domestic economy or the domestic producers and similarly we had also seen a <clears throat> most favored nation concept in the last class which india has removed for Pakistan, and that is also coming as a part of WTO. UPS here asks a simple question that sanitary and phytosanitary these are majors related to which of the following organization. So it will be your World Trade Organization. Please be very specific with that. All right. Otherwise, we don't need to go into details. <coughs> we can skip this. And uh, there is a topic called negotiation on automatic trigger safeguard mechanism. You can go through it. But again, I don't think this will be very much important from your exam perspective. All right. Then again, obviously, some special economic package and everything are being declared. But again, this is not being going to ask in your exam. India and Mauritius have jointly inaugurated the phase one of the Metro Express project. All right. Uh, can someone please tell me whether I had discussed the bilateral 
whether I had discussed the bilateral military exercises with all of you or not in some of the previous classes while discussing the defense. Okay, because one of the students uh, told me like I have not discussed. If it is skipped, I'll definitely discuss those bilateral exercises. Okay, if you remember, please write it down in the comment section. If I have not discussed, I'll discuss the important bilateral exercises of military and other services. All right. So moving ahead, Mauritius was the second top source of foreign direct investment into India. That is 2019-20. All right. Other recent developments. <coughs> okay, I gave the PPT, but I have not discussed. All right. Thank you for the information. Okay. So I'll try to discuss it in today's class itself, if uh, time permits. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I'll discuss in the next class. Anyways, moving ahead. Other recent developments. India and Mauritius signed a US $100 million defense line of credit. Okay. Now, this type of questions are being asked in the exam that recently India has, the, uh, like the question can be drafted in this format. Like recently India has signed, okay, a defense line of cre credit agreement. Uh, it can come either way, like uh, with which of the following countries or it can give that it has signed with Mauritius, but what is the amount? Okay, so you please try to remember the amount and also with the country. And under this, Mauritius would get a Dornier aircraft and an advanced light helicopter that is a Dhruv helicopter on lease, which would build its maritime security capabilities. Okay, the two sides also discuss the Chagos archipelago dispute. Okay, so you see this Chagos archipelago dispute. Now, in APSC prelims, they had simply asked what is the meaning of archipelago. It is like group of islands. Okay, small, small islands. You can see Diago Garcia, Seychelles, Mauritius, Reunion. Okay, then Bajoro to Maldives and Sri Lanka. Now, these are some of the very important islands of Indian Ocean. And in the mapping class, I had already tried to discuss this topic. And you know that this can be asked in the arrangement from south to north order or from north to south order so please keep a visual memory of this particular map the reunion is at the most bottom most uh, layer then mauritius comes and chechils then diago garcio okay and all these are called as chagos archipelago okay this and then the maldives and then sri lanka so at least try to remember these important islands from the arrangement of north to south order or from south to north order all right in 2019, India voted at the United Nations General Assembly in support on the Mauritian position on the issue. Okay, so we let's not go and discuss this Chagos archipelago dispute because it is not important from your prelims perspective. All right. And recently, India has also delivered one lakh covishield vaccines to Mauritius, a very good step. Moving ahead, G20 are very, very important. Okay, one of the very, very important, uh, the regional, uh, one of the very, very important international group. Okay, many questions have been asked from G20 and we will now discuss uh, some of the important uh, uh, international organizations like G20, GCC, IMF, United Nations, World Bank, etc. Okay, now let's move ahead and the G20 membership comprises a mix of the world's largest advanced and emerging economies. Sometimes in prelims, they might simply ask you that about, about, <coughs> sorry, about this particular statement itself, the G20 is having the members of which format or, or, or what type of countries are there, okay? So it is basically a mix of the world's largest, at the same time, the advanced and the emerging economies, the economies which are emerging in nature, all right? So the G20 summit is formally known as Summit on the Financial Markets and the World Economy. Member states, if you talk about here, okay? So you see here that India is a member of G20, a very, very important fact for you to know. And otherwise, you can also remember the important countries like Argentina, Brazil. So these two countries are from basically from South America. From North America, you have Canada, US and Mexico. All right. Then <clears throat> from your uh, from from the European part, you have Germany, Italy, UK, France and Spain. OK, uh, along with Norway and Netherlands. Then you have Russia, Turkey, India, Saudi Arabia, South Africa. OK, then. People's Republic of China, Indonesia, Australia, then some uh, uh, state, uh, countries of African continent like Guinea and Senegal, okay, and along with Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, Singapore. Now, uh, we have not seen basically uh, this uh, exam asking, okay, asking uh, this question of uh, members of G20 because this is very pretty much mixed, but at least try to have an idea of these countries uh, that will help you in eliminating any of the options. Okay, uh, Anjana Kalita, sir, how can we get the PPT of daily newspaper analysis? Please join the free WhatsApp groups. The link are already mentioned in the description box. And Ajanta, okay, you'll get the daily PPTs there. 
So this year's summit was hosted by Saudi Arabia, a very important fact. Virtually in India called for a new global index for the post-corona world. Very, very important fact for your upcoming prelims. All right. So this year's summit was held on at, at Saudi Arabia. There is something that you need to know. And India has called for a new global index for the post-corona world. And this new global index will be based on four pillars. One is talent, technology, transparency, and trusteeship towards the planet. This is a very important fact for your exam. All right, this 40 <coughs> concept <coughs> under the new global index. And this can be also mentioned in the means uh, uh, answers wherever it is relevant. Okay, so please remember talent, technology, transparency, and tra trusteeship. Okay, towards whom? Towards the planet. So this is a new global index that India has called for in the G20 summit. So G20 ke saath up Saudi Arabia, new global index, India, and this 40 concept. Please try to remember this. Okay, so <clears throat> baki aap ye par sakte ho. Obviously, talent ke liye humare paas abhi like talent pool karne ke liye national skill development mission is there. Okay, then India ka new education policy and programs such as Pradhan Mantri Innovative Learning Program through. Okay, so all this has been aligned with this particular element. Technology ke liye aapko pata hai, we have digital India, e-governance and everything. Okay, so all these things are there to, you know, aligned with this particular 40 uh, uh, concept of uh, your... Uh, this new global index then you have the transparency in for that we have right to information ease of doing business to promote transparency in governance in india and trusteeship we have the world should deal with the environment because trusteeship to whom to the planet that is to our art okay in order to save our art from climate change and global warming okay so from all this india has already mentioned four indices under what under unf triple c right under unf triple c okay so now in this international organizations, I am trying to uh, bring what separate environment organizations for you. Okay. For example, UNFCCC, United Nations Environment Program. Uh, though today we'll discuss a few, but uh, we will discuss a few, but we will discuss in one different class all the important organizations from environment perspective. All right. So, uh, uh, and some of the students had also requested me to bring out a class on Assam uh, facts. Okay. Uh, the important facts, mainly the demography and everything, the district-wise and uh, the population and uh, all the factors. So I'll definitely try to bring one class on that particular topic also. Okay. So this 4T that you have seen here, then India's initiative for lowering emissions. Okay. Now this is a very, very important initiative. And for that, India has already mentioned, I told you that four INDCs intended nationally determined contributions for under UNFCCC that was signed after the Paris uh, the uh, Paris Climate Agreement, okay, in 2015, okay, and under that, India has al already promised to reduce the carbon emissions by 33 percentage uh, by the level of 2005 by 2030. India has promised to increase the carbon sink by 2.5 percent. India has promised to increase its renewable energy sources by 40 percent and so on. So similarly, this Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure that was announced by Prime Minister at the Hamburg G20 meeting in 2017, Okay, so we need to coal uh, do the coalition and with different countries in order to make uh, make the globe disaster resilient infrastructure. And India has also jointly in made the initiative of ISA, that is International Solar Alliance. You can definitely expect a question on this particular topic because this has been going on since last four years of current affairs and International Solar Alliance. India has taken a major initiative along with France. And the headquarter is also in Gurugram. That is Guruga, old Guruga, okay? That is a part of your national capital region. And who, which are the countries coming under International Solar Alliance? If this question comes, you should be very clear that we have two particular uh, latitude, right? One is 23 half degree north, okay? And that is known as Tropic of Cancer. And the other one is 23 half degree south. That is Tropic of Capricorn. Now, those countries which are located within this two latitude or, or, or partially located, okay, if a country is, for example, India, okay, for example, India is partially located within this region because half of India is between the tropical part, between 23 half degree north and 23 half degree south, but half of India is not uh, within this tropical region, it is in the subtropical region, right? But still, India is a member because it is partially located. So, partially or wholly, 
okay located within this tropical region and that is between 23 half degree north and 23 half degree south so this particular countries all these countries will be a member of automatically become a member of international solar alliance okay so i see isa will contribute to reducing what carbon footprint so you need to reduce the carbon footprint in order to save the planet and reduce the global warming okay and that will also delay the climate change otherwise climate change is a natural process okay climate change is a natural process but why we are say uh, why we are more concerned about it right now because this climate change is the speed is being made faster because of anthropogenic activities and man-made activities so india will meet its goal of 175 gigawatts of renewable energy as a part of its climate commitments made under the paris so this was what i was talking about okay so before the target of 2022 175 gigawatts please try to remember this figure 175 gigawatts okay <clears throat> then we have some schemes like Ujala, that is Unnat Jyoti by affordable LED because LED will reduce down the energy consumption. Then we have LED and street lightning national program SLNP scheme has been has made LED lights popular. Okay, and then which will also reduce a lot of carbon dioxide emissions per year. Then we have another Ujwala scheme. Okay, Ujala is a different one. It is for LEDs. Ujwala is smoke-free kitchens have been provided to 80 million households. So free gas connection pipelines have been given under this Ujwala scheme. Okay, so Ujala and Ujwala is both different. Then to combat desertification, okay, because a lot of uh, green fields have are being converted into desertification because of less amount of rainfall. United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification, UNCCD, links development and environment to sustainable and management, okay, sustainable land management and aims to combat desertification and the ill effects of the drought. So this is also a very important part. And under that, India right now also has running a national clean air program, okay, NCAP, which aims to decrease air pollution, okay. So is ke under ek suffer bol ke ek apka kya hai, ek index hai, so aaj ka homework hai apko, Yes, yeah, it's, it's called our air quality index AQI. Okay, please give a reading on this particular two topics. Okay, and then we also have Namami Gange program to rejuvenate River Ganga and show the spirit of trusteeship in governance and also to the planet. All right, so that was what something that we discussed about the G20. Okay, and the, why we discussed this particular uh, topics like India's initiative for lowering emissions and all because of this trusteeship, transparency, technology, and talent 40 concept. Under what new global index called by India, where in a meeting summit of G20 hosted by Saudi Arabia. So this is a very, very important topic that you need to know. And please also try to remember the <coughs> at least the important uh, member countries of the G20. OK, and who are the member countries? All developed, advanced and also emerging economies of the world. OK, they DAE. So please try to remember developed countries are also there advanced countries are also there along with the emerging economies are also there <clears throat> united nations the year 2020 marks 75th anniversary of the united nations and its founding charter so a very important part in order to commemorate the historic moment world leaders came together at a one-day high-level meeting at union ga on 21st september 2020 and this meeting theme this is important for prelims it is the future we want the un we need reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism now what we understand by multilateralism uh, i hope you understand okay like it's not a two polar world or a one single polar world for example after independence of india we saw a two polar world mainly ruled by usa and ussr right but right now we are moving ahead to a multilateralism where there are multiple poles okay or multiple pillars of power uh, uh, and and and, and and we focus on multilateralism in order to uh, avoid the war kind of scenario okay because if 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 you go by two pole two polar world war is inevitable okay because a lot of groupings takes place now for example you see that if india becomes a member of rcp india is also close with us and india is also close with china there is a meaning of multilateralism okay so india being a member of different groups at the same time and that is what uh, is also the requirement uh, specific wise okay or in a specific manner like wherever india needs to be a part or for example if india needs to be a part of asean for the development of south and southeast asian countries so india has to be a part of the asean group right but at the same time india if there is a trans uh, 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 like pacific partnership okay 
that was initially launched by like it was meant to be launched by Barack Obama, but it was cancelled by Donald Trump's administration. So we don't know what will happen now during Joe Biden's time period. But India can also be a member of Trans-Pacific Partnership (TPP) or India can also be a member of SCO, where China is also a member of SCO, right? So there is something that we need to focus on, and this is also the requirement, and this has been the theme of United Nations of 2020. Uh, General Assembly meeting, the future we want, the UN we need. So UN we need also means the future we want It is talking basically about the sustainable development and the, and the, and the mitigation of the, of, of the disasters that can be uh, inevitable because of climate change. Okay, so we have to take care of the planet. And the UN we need, it, is, it might also mean about the UN, United Nations reforms that we all are trying to get and reaffirming our collective commitment to multilateralism because that is very important in order to avoid war-like scenario. Okay, so 175 years, 193 member body had the session virtually on account of COVID-19 outbreak. So how many member countries, 193? Another homework I'm giving you, please refer to the last member countries added in United Nations, in World Bank, in IMF, and WTO. Okay, so please note down, I want all of you to find out the countries okay which was which country was added last to united nation membership which country was added last to the wto membership which country was added last to other different organizations like world bank and imf okay so please try to refer to those particular facts it can be an important question in your exam and united nation marks the anniversary of the entry into force in 1945 of the un charter okay and united nations day is celebrated since 1948 on 24th of October. All right. So please remember the 24th October date as the United Nations Day. It can be an important one. All right. Moving ahead, the United Nations is an international organization founded in 1945. Please remember this particular date. It is currently made up of 193 member countries. Also, this figure is important. Its mission and work guided by the purposes and principles contained in its founding charter and implemented by its various organs. Okay, So it's, uh, the aims and objectives are various, like international peace, maintain current security, human rights, okay, humanitarian aid, sustainable development, upholding international law. All these are some of the basic activities that the United Nations look after. And if you talk about the history of United Nations Foundation, because sometimes the history is also being asked, Okay, for example, the Fortalizer Declaration, and new development bank okay the bangkok declaration okay so please try to remember this particular facts in 1899 the international peace conference where it was held it was hague, held in hague that is netherlands okay and it adopted the conference convention for the pacific settlement of international disputes all, all right then <clears throat> the forerunner of united nations was the league of nations okay an organization conceived in circumstances of the first world war and established in 1919 under the Treaty of Versailles. All right. Now, this world history is not there in the syllabus. So even if you do not know, it is okay. And we will not discuss in details in this class at least. Then the ILO, that is International Labour Organization, was created in 1919 under Treaty of Versailles as an affiliated agency of the League of Nations. Okay. And the name United Nations was coined by the United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, this is an important fact you can remember for your exam. And a document called the Declaration by the United Nations was signed in 1942. Okay, so this was again the time period of Second World War. So it was definitely related to it because the United Nations was mainly formed in order to avoid further such world wars in the earth. All okay. So this particular brief history you can note it down. Otherwise, please remember this International Peace Conference held in Hague, which is the history of United Nations Foundation. So this is one thing that you can know. Apart from that, when was ILO created in 1919 under which Treaty of Versailles? Okay, that you can know. And United Nations name was given to the League of Nations by which pre president or from which country? From the US United States president, that is Franklin D. Roosevelt. Please remember this particular facts for the prelims exam. United Nations Conference on International Organizations, okay, 1945. And this conference was held in San Francisco and was ad ad attended by the representatives of 50 countries and signed the United Nations Charter in the year of 1945. So this particular year also becomes really important. So the United Charter of 1945 is a foundational treaty of the United Nations as an intergovernmental organization. So this fact is also important because in the prelims, it is asked in this manner 
about this body consider the following statements okay about united nations and they might give you as the in, whether it is an intergovernmental organization or whether is it is a non-governmental organization or what it is so it is intergovernmental organization it means that the governments of different countries participate in the meetings or in the conferences of this particular international organization all right so the components are, uh, within this if you see if you try to see here okay so the number one, it is having the General Assembly and the General Assembly is the main deliberative policy making. OK, so General Assembly is mainly looking after the policies and the representative organ of the United Nations. So all 193 member states of the United Nations are represented in the General Assembly. This kind of statements are asked in the prelims exam. OK, whether all the member countries are states are represented or not making it the only union body with universal representation. Okay, so this is a very, very important fact. It is the only United Nations body, with which body we are talking about, United Nations General Assembly, okay, with the universal representation. And in each year, September month, the full United Nations membership meets in the General Assembly Hall in New York, okay, where it is having the uh, General Assembly Hall of General Assembly United Nations. It is in New York for the annual General Assembly session and general debate, which many heads of the state attend and address. OK, so please remember this particular place and decisions on important questions such as those on peace and security. All this and admission of new members, other new member ko add karna hai, okay? and decisions on other questions by simple majority. So first you see this, that decision on important questions okay such as on peace or security or admission of new members so this has or budgetary matters all these things requires what two-thirds majority of the general assembly okay is other members other other uh, uh, sorry other questions which are not very important they require hard only simple majority all right so the president of the general Assem assembly is elected each year by assembly to serve a one year term of office so ye jo general assembly hai iska president ka tenure kitna duration hai one year hai okay these things can be asked in the prelims and it has six main committees okay now these committees are not important from your exam perspective second organ of united nation that we can talk about is the security council and it has primarily response it has primary responsibility under the united nation charter for the maintenance of international peace and security. Okay. Or is Security Council uh, Q important is my prelims killer because you know that India has been a member of the non prominent member of United Nations Security Council out of this 15 member states. Okay. So Security Council may kitne have 15 member United Nations General Assembly may sorry universal membership 193 ka 193 participate karte hai. Again, Security Council may sorry countries participate nahi karte hai and only. <coughs> 15 member states are there okay so out of this 15 member states five are permanent members okay and please see these five permanent members ye bilkul question aapko pucha ja sakta in the exam and these five permanent members are china france russia united kingdom and united states all right so us uk china russia and france are the five permanent members and the non permanent members are elected for how many years United Nations General Assembly ka president elect hota hai ek saal ke liye aur United Nations Security Council ka non permanent members elect hota hai do saal ke liye aur isko elect kon karte hai General Assembly on a regional basis theek hai and currently India is a member of this non permanent member for two years all right so veto power okay veto power ek aisa power hai jo refer to the power of the permanent members to veto or reject any resolution of security council matlab koi bhi resolution agar introduce kiya jata hai aur usme ek bhi country agar usko reject karte to pura ki pura uh, resolution reject ho sakta hai okay that is the power of a veto power so the unconditional veto possessed by the five government has been seen the most undemocratic character of the united nations because these five member countries were for the permanent member countries were developed of the uh, were developed countries of the 20th century but now in the 21st century many other emerging developed countries have uh, come by now and unka decision be con later abhi as of now this five permanent member countries okay now this is a very very undemocratic and that is why we're talking about united nations security council reforms jaha pe ye pura permanent membership ka structure ko change karna chahiye okay now critics critics have always been said this so the third part, third part is that we can talk about is about the economic and social council that is ECOSOC. Okay, so United Nations ka jo, uh, 
डिफरेंट ऑर्गेन्स है तो फर्स्ट वी हैव टॉक अबाउट द यूनाइटेड नेशन जनरल असेंबली सेकंड वी हैव टॉक अबाउट द यूनाइटेड नेशन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल एंड थर्ड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इकोसॉक दैट इज द इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल काउंसिल ऑलराइट नाउ इट इज द प्रिंसिपल बॉडी फॉर कोऑर्डिनेशन पॉलिसी रिव्यू ओके सो जो भी कोऑर्डिनेशन करना है पॉलिसी रिव्यू करना है पॉलिसी डायलॉग एंड रिकमेंडेशन ऑन इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल एनवायरमेंटल इश्यूज तो ये सारी चीजें कौन देख रहा है इकोनॉमिक एंड सोशल काउंसिल विल लुक आफ्टर एज आई टोल्ड यू United Nations General Assembly is the only body which is having the universal membership all the 193 similarly ECOSOC is also not having you all the member countries as its member hardly 54 members okay again who elects this 54 members the general assembly for overlapping 3 years terms so united nation general assembly ka president ka tenure tha 1 saal united nation security council ka non permanent members ka tenure hai 2 saal aur ECOSOC ka jo मेंबर्स है उनका टेन्योर है आपका तीन साल ठीक है सो यू प्लीज रेफर टू दिस टेन्योर पीरियड दिस कैन बी डेफिनेटली आस्ट एंड इट इज अ यूनाइटेड नेशन सेंट्रल प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर रिफ्लेक्शन डिबेट एंड इनोवेटिव थिंकिंग ऑन सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट ओके सो इट्स यर इकोसॉक स्ट्रक्चर इट्स वर्क अराउंड एन एनुअल थीम ऑफ ग्लोबल इंपॉर्टेंस टू सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट तो इट इज बेसिकली फोकसिंग ऑन द सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट वेरी मच एंड इट एनश्योर्स फोकस एटेंशन एमंग इकोसॉक्स एरिया ऑफ पार्टनर्स ठीक है so it coordinates the work of 14 un specialized agencies so it definitely coordination is a very important part we have already seen of ecosoc the fourth one is the trusteeship council okay and it was established in 1945 by the united nations charter under chapter number 13 and this trust territory is a non self governing territory placed under an administrative authority by the trusteeship council of united nations okay so league of nations mandate was a legal status and this has been done after the world war 1 on behalf of the league of nations okay so united nations trust territories were the successors of the remaining league of nations mandates okay so after the world war 1 so whosoever were the successors of the remaining league of nations mandates so they came into being with when the league of nations ceased to exist in 1946 because by that time united nations has taken over it had to provide international supervision of 11 trust territories okay so you don't have to go into details of this trusteeship council but at least you have to know that this is also a part of the united nations and by 1994 all these trust territories has attained self government or independence okay so kuch kuch countries ko it was placed under the united nations trusteeship council after the world war had taken place because all the countries had not got had not uh, uh, received the independence and this trusteeship council suspended operation on 1st november 1994 all right and the fifth one that is we are having under united nations is the international court of justice that is icj and this is the principal judicial organ so this can be asked in the prelims which is the principal judicial organ of the united nations and it will be your international court of justice ye kab establish hua tha ye bhi 1945 june by the charter of united nations and began its work in april 1946 Now this ICJ is the successor of the permanent. So, इससे पहले 1945 से पहले क्या था? Permanent Court of International Justice था, which was established by League of Nations in 1920. All right. And last, we have the Secretariat, who will do the work of the United Nations, and it comprises the Secretary General and the tens of thousands of international UN staff members to carry out day-to-day -day work of the United Nations as mandated by the General Assembly. All right. So the general secretary, the secretary general is the chief administrative officer of the organization. So please remember this fact. Appointed by the general assembly on the recommendation. So who re who recommends this secretary general post? It is though it is appointed by the general assembly of United Nations, but it is recommended by the Security Council. Okay. But or is ka? Yeh jo secretary general hai, inka tenure kya hai? For a five year renewable term. So you see, one, two, three, five. We have got the tenures. president of united nations general assembly non permanent members of united nations security council right and after that this three we have the ecosoc members okay 54 member countries and the five year tenure of the secretary general of the united nations secretariat so iske upar definitely a question expect kiya ja sakta hai all right and the funds programs and specialized agencies and others if you talk about here the united system also known uh, unofficial is united nations family is made up of the un itself six major organs okay so isme sare programs funds wagera sab kuch dekha jata hai 
Next, moving ahead to UNICEF. Okay. Pranjal Borg, who PDF, uh, Pranjal Rajbongsi. Uh, for PDF, you have to take the subscription of this course, which is available in the app. And you can download the app. The link has been given in the description box, avail available both in Play Store as well as in Apple iStore. Store. So please uh, do take the subscription. There you'll get the PDF along with the test series of CSAP and the last 25 years solved question papers of UPSC, which is very important. I request all of you, okay, to please solve and at least go through our solutions of past 25 years compilation of UPSC, which will definitely help you because don't consider those questions as questions only. Consider them as topics, okay, and prepare those topics. Definitely you'll get a lot of questions from the state because for the static portion of the syllabus, I am uh, we are not discussing in this live course, okay. Uh, this is only from the current affairs and mainly the most important topics that we are discussing. Today is the 10th class, another 20 class to go, okay, before the 12th of September. So I'll try to complete these 20 lectures by 5th of September, okay. I'll try to complete this course by 5th of September so that you get one week time period for revision. And I'll, as, as promised, this is a 30 days prelims booster class and I will take 30 days classes. And today is a 10th day lecture. So another 20 days to go. So please uh, do the revision because without revision, it will be really difficult. And I hope you all are practicing a lot of MCQs from the test series. Next important body that we can talk about is the United Nations Children Fund. Okay. It is originally known as United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, and it was created by UNGA in 1946 to provide emergency food and health care to children and mothers in countries that has been devastated by the World War II. Okay, so UNICEF is very aggressively in the development of children and mother. And in 1950, UNICEF's mandate was extended to address the long-term needs of children and women in developing countries also. So see, you see that it is also working with the developing countries definitely and apart from that if you see it is having an executive board a 36 member board establishes policies okay and united nations ecosoc usually like the, the the members are government representatives okay so the members of this executive board of unicef are actually the government representatives who are elected by the united nations ecosoc body usually for three years term of for the member to become a member of unicef UNICEF supply division is based on Copenhagen, that is Denmark. Okay. After that, we have a United Nations Population Fund, and formerly, formerly the United Nations Fund for Population Activities is the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency. Its mission is to deliver a world where every pregnancy is wanted, every childbirth is safe, and every young person's potential is fulfilled. So please try to capture this under UNFPA. In 2018, UNFPA launched efforts to achieve three transformative results, and these are ending unmet need for family planning, ending preventable maternal debt, and ending gender-based violence and harmful practices, a very, very important issues of the globe. Then we have a very important program that is under the United Nations, and it is the United Nations Development Program, and it is the UN's Global Development Network. UNDP was established, please remember this date, 1965. And it is also having an executive board, having a representative from 36 countries around the world who serve on a rotational basis. And UNDP is actually, I had already discussed this in the index and the reports class, where we discuss about the UNDP is central to United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. We have discussed about all these sustainable development goals, all the 17 sustainable development goals. And 165 countries and unites a 40 United Nations fund program. Okay, so this is the 2030 ka agenda for sustainable development. Hai. This is under your United Nations development program. Then under United Nations, we have another important program that is your United Nations environment program. And it is a global environmental authority that sets a global environmental agenda, okay, especially for your environmental agendas. And it promotes the coherent implementation of the environmental dimension of sustainable development. Okay, so United Nations Environment Program and World Meteorological Organization established the IPCC. Very, very important. This question has been already asked in the exams. Okay, so I am giving you a homework that all these bodies that we are discussing, you please find out its headquarters. Okay, if you have this Lucent GK book, okay, you will get the table there. So you can follow this Lucent GK for this facts. Uh, facts 
आई डोंट थिंक आई हैव टू वेस्ट टाइम बिकॉज यू कैन हट यू कैन गो थ्रू दिस फैक्स इसका हेड क्वार्टर कहाँ पे ये अभी पढ़ाने के लिए आई डोंट थिंक इट्स नेसेसिटी इज देयर सो यू शुड ऑल्सो बी कम्फर्टेबल विद द हेड क्वार्टर्स ऑफ दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट बॉडीज सो प्लीज आज ही इसको रात के बिफोर यू गो टू स्लीप प्लीज ट्राई टू नोट डाउन ऑल द हेड क्वार्टर्स ऑफ दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट एजेंसीज एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बट प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस यू पी एस सी इज ऑलरेडी आर्क दैट IPCC okay this IPCC is very central to a lot of important uh, initiatives like UNFCCC okay but then um, many other uh, uh, like uh, uh, conventions or like protocols like Kyoto protocol i think you have already heard about it okay so this IPCC is very central to it it was formed in the year of 1988 very recent one as compared to the other organizations but who has formed this so please try to see this that UNEP and World Meteorological Organization okay so this question can be expected in the exam so please try to remember this fact since its founding the unep has played a key role for development of multilateral environmental agreements and the secretaries for the following nine mes are currently hosted by unep okay so all these secretaries are hosted okay by unep all these are very important in fact we'll talk about it in the environment class the convention on biological diversity okay cbd is a very important program sites is a very important program cms okay all this can you can expect a question vienna convention for protection of ozone layer okay now this kind of conventions are already coming you have minamata convention on mercury pollution you have basel convention on control of transboundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposal stockholm convention on persistent organic pollutants and rotterdam convention on prior informed consent procedure for central hazardous chemicals and pesticides in the international trade now this is a very very important part okay you can simply get a match the following question okay you can simply get a match the following question that minamata convention is related to what it is related to your mercury basel is related to what it is related to transboundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposal stockholm is related to all the organic pollutants okay rotterdam is related to the hazardous chemicals okay so this is this basel is related to transboundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposal but rotterdam is uh, related to your certain hazardous chemicals and pesticides in international trade okay so this is chemicals and pesticides and this is hazardous waste basel and rotterdam so don't get confused vienna is related to ozone layer okay so please try to remember this conventions vienna convention minamata convention basel convention stockholm convention and rotterdam Conven convention these five conventions are really important for your exam any exam you give you can expect a question from this five conventions very very important international conventions on very important uh, issues okay so once again i am repeating for the last time vienna convention is for your ozone layer protection minamata is for your mercury uh, pollution Basel is related to your transboundary movements for hazardous waste and their disposal. Stockholm is related to your organic pollutants. Rotterdam is related to your chemicals and pesticides in international trade. All right, so please rem remember these five conventions and the related issues. Moving ahead with an another important program under United Nations that is your United Nations Human Settlement Program. All right, and this Human Settlement Program. is very very important one it is for basically better urban future okay because on the entire globe is facing a issue of haphazard and unsustainable urbanization which is leading to a lot of issues so this was established in 1978 as an outcome of the first un conference on human settlements and sustainable urban development okay and this is the habitat one and it was held in vancouver of canada uh, country second it was held habitat to in istanbul turkey in 1996 after 20 years okay so there are not many conferences and that is why you can expect a question on this because till now there are hardly three uh, meetings okay of un habitat so definitely you can expect a question even a match the following because three places you can easily remember so the first habitat one was held in vancouver canada 1976 so you can see after 20 years it this is being conducted second it is it was in istanbul turkey that is 1996 and 2016 the third united nations conference on housing and sustainable urban development habitat 3 was held in 2016 in quito in ecuador okay which is a south american country okay and the goal to 11 of the sustainable development goals make cities and human settlement inclusive self safe 
resilient and sustainable. So this is mainly targeting because from 2015, you know that from 2015 to 2030, this is the time period for your SDG goals, okay, to fulfill the SDG targets. And by this time period, it, you know that this important uh, uh, targets uh, out of this 17 important goals, uh, the goal number 11 is related to your urban, uh, urban development, sustainable urban development. And this is being discussed in the third United Nations Conference on Housing and Sustainable Urban Development that is also known as Habitat 3. So this Habitat 3 is a program under which particular program it can be simply asked in your exam. Otherwise, you can also expect a question on all the three important locations starting from Vancouver, Canada, 1976. Okay, 1996, Istanbul, Turkey. And third is your Quito, Ecuador, South America. A very important part for you to remember. The next important part that we can discuss about is about the World Food Pro Program. And it is a leading humanitarian organization saving lives and changing lives, delivering food assistance. Okay, so this was established in 1963 by FAO, that is your Food and Agriculture Organization and United Nations General Assembly. So World Food Program is the is not the only program of United Nations General Assembly. Sometimes you can get confused in the exam. It is also having FAO related to it. Please tell me the headquarter of FAO in the comment box. Okay, where is the headquarter of FAO? Please tell me in the comment box. Okay. So moving ahead. Uh, there are certain un United Nations specialized agencies and these agencies, you can go through it. Okay. We have like FAO, this is a food and agriculture organization was created in Quebec City, Canada by the first session. Okay. So it is a specialized agency of the United Nations, which is working to defeat what? Hunger. Yes, Shreya, Rome is the correct answer. Okay. So after that, we have ICAO, that is your Chicago Convention, the International Civil Aviation Organization was established here and this is related Chicago Convention is related to civil aviation. Okay, so please try to look at this. Then you have the International Fund for in Agricultural Development. Okay, International Fund for Agricultural Development and it was established as an international financial institution in 1977 through United Nations General Assembly. So there are various specialized programs of United Nations obviously and you don't have to look at all the specialized agents uh, programs because it's almost impossible but at the same time a few you can remember okay then you have this international labor organization a very very important one and this as we already discussed it was a part of the treaty of versailles after world war one it was created in 1919 and it is an agency of the league of nations which was found during the world war one prior to forming of united nations okay so definitely this is working for labor reforms and everything for the protection of uh, the of the laborers and the workers from the capitalist exploitation so by signing the united nation agreement whereby ilo became the first united nations specialized agency in 1946 this is a very very important fact for your prelims exam okay so what is the fact the fact is that ilo is the first united nations specialized agency okay and this organization has also won the nobel peace prize on its 50th anniversary in 1969 All right. It emphasized the future of work and decent work. And it is precisely with the imperative that ILO establishes Global Commission on the Future of Work. So this Global Commission on Future of Work has been established by whom? By ILO. And there is also a report. Up report or indices for the class. I think second or third class. So this report on future of work is also and it is released by okay, ILO. Then you have the IMF. Okay, but we'll take a small break here. All right, we'll take a small break of two minutes and then again we will continue from here. All right, a small drinks break. So I so you all can take a small break of one or two minutes and we'll continue again after two minutes. Don't go anywhere, just be there. We will again talk, we'll again discuss the topics after two minutes.
all right so let's move ahead again with the second part of today's class i hope you guys are there and like uh, we took a small break for 2 minutes i hope i'm audible enough please write yes in the comment section if you can hear my voice Okay, Edwin. So moving ahead with International Monetary Fund. IMF a very important part and it was also called as Bretton Woods conference okay now this type of question APC has already asked so it is very important for you to know that there was a Bretton Woods conference held and IMF and World Bank both are a part of the Bretton Woods conference okay so this is also called as Bretton Woods conference and Bretton Woods new hemisphere united states Okay, this was held to regulate the international monetary and financial order after the conclusion of World War II, and it resulted in the foundation of IMF in 1945. So please try to remember this particular years. Similarly, World Bank, okay, is also called as Bretton Woods Conference body. So please remember this. This has been already asked in the exam, and this was held to regulate the international monetary and financial order after the conclusion of World War II. ठीक है तो पहला वर्ल्ड बैंक इज आल्सो नोन एज आईबीआरडी इंटरनेशनल बैंक ऑफ रिकंस्ट्रक्शन एंड डेवलपमेंट ओके एंड इट इज अ फाउंडिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन ऑफ वर्ल्ड बैंक देन यू हैव इंटरनेशनल मैरिटाइम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इट इज आफ्टर लुक इट इज आल्सो यूनाइटेड नेशंस स्पेशलाइज्ड एजेंसी ओके विद रिस्पांसिबिलिटी फॉर द सेफ्टी एंड सिक्योरिटी ऑफ शिपिंग एंड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ मैरिन एंड एटमॉस्फेरिक पोल्यूशन बाय शिप्स You have also a specialized agency of United Nations called as ITU, International Telecommunication Union. Okay, and it was founded in 1865, based in Geneva, Switzerland. All right, and it works on the principle of international cooperation. Next, UNESCO is a very important body. Again, founded in 1945. It is located in Paris, France. Okay, the headquarters are important. Sometimes you can get a very easy question in the form of maths. The following. and it is basically looking after the cultural heritage sites and everything and we have to know about the unesco world heritage sites of india under that recently in the news also i had discussed dholavira getting the unesco world heritage site this year and there are various natural and cultural unesco world heritage sites in india one of them is a mixed which is kanchenjunga national park in sikkim and assam is having two unesco world heritage sites both are natural one is kajiranga and the other one is your manas national park you have united nations conference on trade and development it supports developing countries to access the benefit of globalized economy more fairly and effectively okay then uh, also focusing on investment finance and inclusive and sustainable development who a very important one okay i also want all of you to know, be very comfortable with the vaccines and Uh, the details of covishield and covaxin and uh, pfizer and everything okay if possible i'll bring one class okay or within one class i'll try to discuss about the important informations of the vaccines because since it it has been in news since last year definitely you can expect a question on vaccines this year okay and also the the diseases okay please try to see some of the diseases like which disease is a virus viral disease or which one is a bacterial disease or which one is like a, a like a, a fung fungal disease okay so this kind of disease for example polio okay what is a polio uh, it, whether it is a bacterial okay or whether it is a viral or whether it is fungal you have malaria what it is if you have dengue okay then you have covid 19 and so many uh, like this this is this is a, sometimes you can expect a match the following question okay that what disease is or it, it is of which type whether it is viral bacterial normally it will come in this three out of these three types okay viral bacterial and fungal okay so you please uh, i'm giving you one homework that uh, definitely all the topics cannot be covered in this 30 days duration so please try to uh, know 
the important diseases like malaria, poli polio, dengue, COVID-19, obviously it is a viral one, okay? Then whatever disease you know, okay, please try to find out whether it is a viral or a bacterial or whether it is a fungal disease. Then you have WHO, again, it is established in 1948, three years after the United Nations, again, a specialized agency for health, okay? And its headquarter is available in present in Geneva, Switzerland. It is also an intergovernmental organization, okay? Now, why this is important, you see, uh, because once a UPSC, I think in the year of 2016, they had asked about IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, okay? And this IUCN, which publishes the red list, okay? So that is whether you comment in the comment box, whether it is an intergovernmental or a non-governmental NGO, okay? So that was asked in the UPSC prelims of 2016. So these type of questions are normally asked. So that is why you need to know. And all these bodies are actually intergovernmental board organizations where the governments participate. But in IUCN, the governments are not participating. Okay, the private members are participating. The non-governmental bodies are participating there. All right. Yes, it is an international NGO. That is IUCN. So this WHO is mainly working in the health sector. Then you have one, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Okay, so that you need to know and it was created in 1950 during the aftermath of second world war to help millions of europeans who had fled or lost their homes so this now you tell me whether india is a signatory to united nations high commissioner for refugees or not okay you you need to know this because this can be asked in the exam and united uh, uh, nations high commissioner for refugees is not okay it is not a signatory uh, like india is not a signatory member to this all right so please be very very careful about this particular information so in 1954 united nations so you see that these bodies are winning the nobel peace prize so it is very important sometimes they might simply ask you about this okay and The start of the 21st century has seen UNHCR help with major refugee crisis, okay, because we have seen in the 21st century a lot, many number of refugee crises in Africa, Middle East, the, the case of Syria, okay, then uh, from Africa, all the top five, like Mauritius, then you have uh, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt, okay, so from all these countries, they have crossed the Mediterranean Sea, and they have crossed to Europe, okay, and they have settled as refugees there, then you have the uh, uh in the in, in the eastern part of Mediterranean sea like countries like syria lebanon okay then from there also because of a lot of issues okay uh, like the war and conflict a lot of people have migrated and become a refugee in other countries so this particular uh like uh, uh refugee crisis are important and unhcr has been playing a major role in this part so you need to be very thorough about this and at the same time you also need to know because in India also there is a crisis of illegal immigrants and uh, Rohingya crisis for the refugee thing. And, but India is not a signatory to this UNHCR. So please be very careful about that. Then you can give a reading about U India and UN. Okay, we are not covering this. Today there are 26 UN agencies in India. Okay, and apart from that, you can also see about FAO. The capital is at Rome that we have already talked about. Okay, then this UN AIDS is also a very important one. India has worked with this, okay, to, for the HIV infection patients. And Asia Pacific Center for Transfer of Technology is there. Not very important though. UNESCO, we already discussed, World Health Organization. Okay, so we are moving ahead. So we have discussed in details about the United Nations and its different organs and bodies. So I hope you will try to remember this part. Okay, that is a very, very important one. All right. So moving ahead with the another important organization and that is your SCO, okay? And this is known as Shanghai Cooperation Organization, okay? Now, before we discuss about this, let me in briefly tell you about RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, okay? Now, this we are not covering in the slides because uh, India is not a member of this. India has not joined it, okay? But you should be knowing about the members of RCEP and this is led by China. Okay, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, C also means for China. China is leading this. Now, who are the member countries of RCEP? Please see this carefully. There are total 16 members of RCEP. Okay, and out of the 16 members, 10 are from the ASEAN group of member countries. Okay, that we had already discussed in the last class. And along with this 10, there are six more. And out of the six more, one is China, one is Russia, 
okay then another one is japan and then south korea and then australia and new zealand okay so you see these are like uh, two pairs of countries very nearby china and russia nearby japan and south korea nearby and australia and new zealand nearby so these six countries and along with the 10 asian countries they have formed this regional comprehensive so you see they all come from a particular reason for to improve their trade and everything but india has not joined this particular group okay so apart from that china also has one organization that is known as shanghai cooperation organization now this rcp is also having a bank okay and that is your aiib okay similarly BRICS. We had discussed about a new development bank. Now, China, this RCEP is having this AIIB, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, and its capital is at Beijing. Okay, that, that is Beijing. And we had already discussed about the important capitals, uh, sorry, the locations of this important three banks, Asian Development Bank, Manila, Philippines, AIIB, Beijing, and the new development bank that we had already discussed about, Shanghai. So the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, okay, the India and Pakistan actually recently became members in 2017. And that is why this is more important for your exam perspective. The meeting of 2017 was chaired by Russian President Vladimir Putin. And India has proposed to set up a special working group on innovation in startups and a subgroup on trade med traditional medicine with SCO. So please see this. Now, India, uh, now the traditional medicine is going in a very prominent manner, Ministry of Ayush and so many other organs. And this traditional medicine with SEO, this is a recent initiative, so this can be directly asked. The Prime Minister of India indirectly referred Chinese infrastructure projects in Pakistan occupied Kashmir that we are talking about, about mainly about the China Pakistan economic corridor through the Pakistan occupied Kashmir and India China standoff at line of actual control. And India has urged members of the SEO to respect territorial integrity and sovereignty of each other. So connectivity problem and all this uh, like Chabahar port in Iran in that India is the, trying to develop, okay, along with the INSTC, very important international north-south transit co transport corridor. Okay, so this projects, India is very much related to it and it is a very, very important one for India. And SEO is also having a Buddhist heritage, okay, you can see here, SEO is also having a Buddhist er heritage. Now coming directly to the important parts of the, important parts of the, uh, member countries okay and this is a permanent intergovernmental international organization so you see here this, this is not an NGO this is a governmental body okay the governments participate here and who are the member states so please see this carefully these are the member states you have to be very thorough we had discussed about the member states of SARC and BIMSEC today we are discussing the members of RCEP and SCO okay and uh, I, I one homework I'll give you. Please find out the members of GCC countries. But this I had already discussed. It. This is why I'm not discussing now. We had already discussed in the mapping class. Okay, I think uh, the first uh, second lecture of this series. So I'll not be discussing. So you find out the members of GCC Gulf Cooperation countries. Okay, now SCO members are China. So you see this. It is also also mentioned here in this map. So China is a member. Okay, so members are drawn as blue and you see this entire region of blue is are the member countries okay so this particular reason this particular reason you can see of the asian countries so russia is there china is there okay along with that russia and china we have ticked okay then very important recently you should know that india and pakistan has joined right so definitely you don't have to remember it separately india and pakistan you know that in 2017 and that is why it is an uh, important part of the exam Okay, and then apart from that, the five Central Asian countries that we had discussed in the mapping class, okay, but, but, there's a but here that five member countries are not there, four members of Central Asian countries are here, okay, and that is Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. I'll also help you memorize the uh, capitals of these countries, so if you have not, if you missed that class, please refer to the mapping class of this series, you will remember the capitals of this important nations okay so which nation is not there in this uh, uh, seo if if i ask you it is mainly can you comment in the comment box can you comment in the comment box which member nation of central asian countries are not a member of seo that is what you need to remember okay if you can remember that after that the member countries of seo will be very easy because china and russia you can easily remember okay 
India and Pakistan, you can easily remember. And uh, one ex one on four member countries of Central Asia except one. And very good. It is Turkmenistan. Okay, it is Turkmenistan, which is which is not a member of the SCO. Otherwise, you have Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan as the members of SCO. So Turkmenistan, it is not Iraq or Iran. It is Turkmenistan. Okay, so Iraq and Iraq, Iraq or Iran does not belong to Central Asian countries, but but so that is how you remember the member states of SCO. Okay, so four members of Central Asia except Turkmenistan, and then two pairs: China, Russia, and India, Pakistan. Okay, so these are there are eight member countries of SCO similar to SARC. Okay, but apart from that, there are some observer states like you can see Iran, Mongolia, Belarus, and Afghanistan are the observer states. Dialogue partners are like Sri Lanka, Turkey, Nepal, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Cambodia. And guest attendances like ASEAN, Turkmenistan. Okay, so Turkmenistan is a guest attendance here. Turkmenistan has not been added. Okay, so then uh, United Nations and CIS. So this, uh, you don't have to remember this part, okay? But at least remember this eight member states of SCO. And remember that Turkmenistan or Iran or Iraq is not a member of SCO. All right. So the official language of SCO are Russian and Chinese. A very important one. Apart from that, its genesis start kaha hua tha? SCO 2001 mein, And like Kazakhstan, China, Kyrgyzstan, Russia, and Tajikistan, they were the founding members, theke? Neither India tha, because India and Pakistan has recently joined, so you know. So ek ko minus kar do ab, theke? So Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Okay, so even Uzbekistan was not a member of it. Okay, so initially it was known as Shanghai Five when the concept came out in 1996. Okay, and Uzbekistan Air 2001 May and Shanghai 5 was renamed as SCO. So, pehle, uh, in initially, SCO was known as what? It was known as Shanghai 5. Theke? So, Uzbekistan had joined in 2001 and India and Pakistan became members in 2017. All right. So, what are objectives? Dekh sakte ho isme? Ye, uh, the objectives are iska. Theke? politics, trade, economy. Ye sare inko dekhna hai. Apart from that, Guiding principles, the Shanghai spirit, okay, for development, mutual benefit, and non alignment, everything. And SCO Kaab Dekhlo Thurasa, head of state council, okay, this is the supreme SCO body which decides all the internal functioning and everything, okay. And SCO secretary, kaha pe hai, ye Beijing me hai, okay. And combat terrorism ke upar bhi kaam karte hai yaha pe. And day to day activities, vagera, these things are not very important, but at least remember that this SCO secretary is there present in Beijing area. What is the importance for India? Definitely for security energy, not important from prelims perspective. But again, India ka ek tapi pipeline tha, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India. Okay, and this is is ka discussion be SCO maker sector because Pakistan is there because uh, Pakistan has created a deadlock in SARC. So India needs a different platform to talk with Pakistan here. Then trade and geopolitical wise, it can be there. Next important topic, international events in news, Swiss Canal blockade will not discuss here. We have discussed this in details in the mapping class. So I request all of you to go through the mapping class, the second lecture of this series. Okay, so please go through this. We will not discuss it here again. Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict, uh, not very important from this year perspective, uh, APSC perspective. Okay, but uh, you just try to see Azerbaijan area. The capital is Baku. Okay, this is the capital, which is a border area of Caspian Sea. Okay. Otherwise, we'll not discuss this particular topic. I don't think this will come in the exam. Okay. Uh, you can just remember this uh, fact here, which talks about the Armenia brought the India Swati military radar system. Okay. So there is between uh, within the India Armenia bilateral cooperation. So please try to remember this Swati military radar system with Armenia. India Azerbaijan, obviously, this is an international north south transit corridor. Okay, this is a multimodal network. It's may infrastructure build up for communication or ye multimodal is silly hai kyuki is may ship, rail, road. Okay, sare use kya jayega. Or ye India, Iran, Afghanistan, say hoke pura Central Asia and Europe tak. Okay, connecting India to Central Asia, Europe. This will be connected and that is why it is a north south transit corridor. Okay, and India is playing a major role. Yaha pe India is going through iran okay agar aap yaha pe agar map ek dekh uh, let me see if there is any map in this okay we don't have a map but see here from india it is going through like this this is iran or iran ka jo port banaya gaya hai that is your chabahar port that was developed by india okay 
so from then from iran it will i had already discussed this in the mapping class so i'm not discussing it here so i hope you will visit the lecture if you have missed it okay then there's a pakistan angle and one well one road initiative also so let's not go into details because this will be from mains perspective we are let's simply focus on prelims as of now so this is the okay there, there is a map already here given okay this is about the int instc so you can see here and it was established on 12th of september 2000 in saint petersburg by iran russia and india for purpose of promoting transportation cooperation among the member states okay so this is you can see uh, so many countries are being here and this seas baltic sea north sea okay black sea mediterranean sea arabian sea bay of bengal so caspian sea so this all are getting connected from india it is bandar abbas iran okay and then it is moving through you can see azerbaijan that is the capital of Baku, capital of azerbaijan is baku then it is moving ahead crossing this caucasus mountains then reaching moscow capital of russia st petersburg then moving through europe okay and then it is again through coming through mediterranean sea crossing the red sea okay the gulf swiss canal is also being crossed here then uh, through this uh, uh gulf of eden it is reaching the arabian sea and then finally black back to mumbai it is india so this is a very important transport corridor which is again putting a threat to your one belt one road initiative of china okay this corridor connects indian ocean and the persian gulf to caspian sea okay so very very important topic so please go ahead with this then the chabahar port i already told you that this was being developed by india in iran and this is a counter to the gwadar port development in pakistan by china okay and this is a part of the string of pearls theory of china okay so i have already discussed the ports in some other class so i hope you have already gone through it <clears throat> So this will also counter what the Chabar port will also counter China's China Pakistan economic corridor and also China's One Belt One Road initiative. Okay. So I will show you a little bit. This is Mumbai to Chabar port. This is India, and then from this, it India is getting connected to Afghanistan because Afghanistan is a landlocked country, and Afghanistan me jo highway infrastructure bana rahe, ye bhi India hi bana rahe. That is your Jharand Dalaram highway. Okay. So that is a very important development. So this is the Chabar port. Okay, you can see this is Jaranj. Okay, or here, where is Delaram? Hai. This is also Kabul. So this highway project is also being developed by India, and Gwadar is very near to Chabahar. Okay, so this is also very very important geostrategically. Then last, uh, this is the One Belt One Road initiative. This is the the initiative of China. Okay, India has not taken part in it till now, and this is the reminiscence of the Silk Road. Okay, the earlier Silk Road. And this is a stretch from East Asia to Europe. Sometimes this can be simply asked in the prelims. Ki ye East Asia, because this is the this is entirely Asia, and this is the eastern portion. Ab dekhte to yahan se start ho raha hai kahan tak ja raha hai? Europe tak ja raha hai. So this is from East Asia to Europe. Okay. So the plan the plan is to prompt our land Silk Road economic belt and maritime Silk Road because yahan pe dekho ab maritime bhi hai through uh, sea and ocean water bodies. In fact, the INSTC. Okay, that is also. Through this particular road only, so this that is why I was telling that this is also counter to your one bell one road initiative initiated by China. Okay, and it is a part. What is China Pakistan economic corridor? Okay, which is a threat to India. And what was this original Silk Road? If you see here, this original Silk Road during the westward expansion of China's Han Dynasty. Okay, very old. This is 2nd century, 3rd century BC. Ka baat hai ye. It's four straight networks throughout the Central Asian countries as well as modern day India and Pakistan to the south. Okay, so it was mainly established during the Han Dynasty, 2nd, 3rd century BC. Okay, then comes the Iran nuclear deal, and this is also very important uh, for your prelims exam. Aapko ye dekhna chahiye. Ye kafi news mein hai aur ye jo in Iran aur deal hua tha P5 plus one. Okay, P5 means jo hum logon ne UNSC ka permanent members dekha tha. Kon kon tha yaha pe? US, UK, France, China, Russia. Aur one jo hai kya hai extra yaha pe add hua hai. That is Germany. They had agreed with Iran. Theek hai? And this deal was named as Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action (JCPOA). Simple yehi puch lega ki ye JCPOA kya hai? Ye itna news mein hai. कि इसको आपका डेफिनेटली पूछा जा सकता है जॉइंट कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्लान ऑफ एक्शन इट इज रिलेटेड टू व्हाट एंड इन कॉमन पार्लेंस एज ईरान न्यूक्लियर डील ओके सो इसको कॉमनली ये भी जाना जाता है कि ये ये क्या है आपका ईरान न्यूक्लियर डील 
ओके ना वट इज दिस अंडर दिस डील ईरान ने एग्री क्या किया है कि इनका जो न्यूक्लियर एक्टिविटी है उसको थोड़ा कर्ब करेंगे कम करेंगे ओके नहीं तो यूएस सेंक्शन लगा देंगे और वही हुआ था उन्होंने उनका ये जॉइंट कॉम्प्रेंसिव एक्शन प्लान ऑफ एक्शन वायलेट किया था दो जो दो 15 में साइन किया था एंड दैट इज वाई डोनाल्ड ट्रम्प का गवर्नमेंट ने ईरान के ऊपर सेंक्शन लगा दिया था और इंडिया को भी बोला था कि आप भी ईरान से क्रूड ऑयल एंड एवरीथिंग इंपोर्ट करना बंद करो एंड दैट इज वेयर इंडिया हैड टू लूज द चाबहार पोर्ट द सेकंड फेज ठीक है बिकॉज इंडिया वाज गोइंग मोर क्लोज विथ यूएस यूएस ने ईरान के ऊपर सेंक्शन लगा के रखा था एंड दैट इज वाई ईरान ने बोला कि आपको जो हम लोगों ने चाबहार पोर्ट देख के रखा है उसका सेकेंड फेज भी है और सेकेंड फेज हम लोग किसको देंगे आइडर हम लोग खुद बनाएंगे नहीं तो हम चाइना को दे देंगे एंड दिस कैनॉट बी uh india cannot tolerate this okay so that is why india's international diplomacy should be uh, uh decided on independent on its own independent manner without uh, depending upon uh, or without being dominated by powerful countries like usa okay so apna hamare international relations hamare diplomatic relations we should we are a sovereign country we should be allowed we should be able to decide on our own all right but at the same time we cannot compromise our relationship with us now this is diplomacy this is the job of diplomats okay how we deal with two different countries at the same time so this was what the iran nuclear deal was there okay to curb the uh, nuclear activities of iran and per usna is deal ko abandon kiya tha during the donald trump's uh, time period and there were sanctions and everything okay so this was there and what was iaea stand international atomic energy agency okay it reported concluded iran's stockpile of uranium and heavy water as well as its implementation of additional protocols were in compliance with the agreement so iaea ne us ke against stand kiya okay and widely known as this organization within the united nations family so this is also a part of un united nations so please see the headquarter of iaea okay and it is a international center for cooperation in the nuclear field it was created in 1957 in response to the deep fears and expectations generated by the discoveries its headquarter already have mentioned it its headquarter aapka hai vienna austria that is your europe okay so objective kya hai the agency works with member states and multiple partners worldwide to promote safe secure and peaceful use of nuclear technologies taki aap isko bomb na banao isko bhi nobel peace prize mila hai okay in 2005 and functions it is an independent international organization that reports annually to united nations general assembly okay and when necessary it also reports to un united nations security council in regards to instances of members non compliance with safeguards and security obligations so agar koi member countries isko iska uh, compliance comply nahi kar rahe hai okay and they are creating nuclear bombs and everything so definitely they have to report it to united nations security council so that is what we had to discuss from the topic of international organizations i hope you have all enjoyed it and we try to discuss all the important topics that was available from this particular uh, topic for the upcoming exam so i hope uh, you all will revise it and agar aapko aur bhi kuch important topics lagta hai from this particular topic you can let me know or agar mujhe bhi lagta hai ki aur important topics discuss karna chahiye to i will definitely bring it lekin aise karenge to bahut zyada बहुत ज्यादा टॉपिक्स आ जाएगा ठीक है बट विट इज ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल कि एक महीने में हम लोग सारे टॉपिक्स कवर कर सकते हैं दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो जितना भी पॉसिबल हो सकता है आई विल ट्राई टू ब्रिंग इट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू इन द नेक्स्ट इन विद इन द थर्टी डेज ड्यूरेशन ऑफ क्लास सो वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट कम्प्लीटेड टेन लेक्चर्स ओके द नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी लेक्चर्स आई विल डेफिनेटली कम्प्लीट इट विद इन सेप्टेम्बर फाइव ओके फिफ्थ ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर एंड सो दैट यू कैन हैव वन वीक ऑफ टाइम फॉर योर रिविजन ऑल राइट सो प्लीज keep on practicing a lot okay do not uh, stop your practice and try to revise it as much as you can and i hope you are doing good with your static portion of preparation because that is also very important and if you have if you want to take the subscription you can visit the csap app in the play store and apple i store the link has been given in the description box you can you have just launched it at just a minimum at a rate of 1000 rupees excluding gst so you can just uh take the subscription and you you'll get the pdf materials of all these courses along with the test series and the past year 25 years solve question papers of upsc along with its solution so thank you so much everyone i hope you all are doing good and please stay safe at this crucial time it's very important to take care of your health before the exam and also do some smart studies and do some smart revision along with a lot of practice we'll meet in the next class till then thank you and bye bye and good night take care